through your body to conserve oxygen, and you're going to be lying for about 15 minutes on the ground, and not enough oxygen coming in, but still enough oxygen in your in your blood and uh, in your body to sustain your brain alive. And after 15 to 20 minutes, uh, nobody will be able to help you. Uh, unless somebody will puncture a hole in here and then you start breathing, make you start breathing again. Uh, we're, we're not, if we're, we're going to defend ourselves, we're, we're not going to really try to break somebody's throat. Usually somebody that's trying to break somebody's throat is somebody who likes doing that. Uh, I mean, there, there are other things to do. But basically, uh, you know, if somebody grabs you, you, you have to know that you have two seconds to get the thumbs away. How are you going to do that? So, like that, it's easy. Try, try to bring your arm back. It's hard. Okay. Here we go. I'm breathing my arm uh, like a spoon, all the fingers together, close to my neck, and pulling my shoulders back. That's it. And I'm leaning backwards. And I lean backwards, and I can knee him, and after that, I can help him. Basically. I'm sorry. Um, and then on the front, we have big muscles in the chest and, and big muscles in the thigh. Uh, if you hit somebody in the muscle, I don't know if, if you were a kid, you hit somebody in the shoulder, like joking around, it might be painful. You have lactic acid that stays in the, in the large muscle, and then that, that person will, will slow down that part of the body. You won't, if, if he's in pain, the muscle is tight, then the motoric uh, ability of that area is, is less now. So maybe if you kick somebody in here, he won't be able to chase you that fast. Uh, you can also break somebody's leg, we'll discuss it later. Uh, but if you hit somebody in here, or you get hit in here hard, then you know, you're going to be knocked back and maybe you won't be able to, it's going to be painful for you, for you to do that side. That's about it. Uh, and then you have the sternum here. Uh, and another way to, to hurt the neck, instead of choking somebody, is with, with a hand. You just extend your shoulder and your hand and put all your fingers there. And it's a, it's a soft part. We have the cartilage, which is a little bit hard, but it, it's not going to break your finger. Now, a hand and a shoulder is longer than, than two hands. If somebody comes to grab you with two hands, you can stop on the floor. He's trying to reach you, he can't actually. If, if you're talking to somebody, they'll already grab you, now I'm on the side, so I only have one hand. The other hand doesn't do anything in here, so I can just do that. I don't care about the other hand, it's not doing anything. But o over here, you can do this, uh, hit a minute groin. Um, and then we have the, st the sternum bone. The heart sits right underneath the sternum bone, between the sternum bone and the spine. It, they say it's on the left because m more of it is on the left, but it's right between that. And so it's, it protects most of it, but right at the end of the sternum bone and the top of the chest, uh, it's this, the solar plexus. What is my phone? <laughs> Here you, you're hitting them close to the heart. Uh, and do it, that, you know, that's the end where the heart is. And because jump back on the, on the ground, and not move, they might come up after a few seconds and you know, before, before you need to do anything, they might fall back again, it, it's weird. I, I, I kicked somebody in a solar plexus one time with a military shoe, you know, I was surrounded by like 20 people. So I, I just leaned on one person and kicked him with a heel right here. He fell over two steps, he was lying on the ground for, for 30 seconds, then he got up, it, you know, he grabbed something, tried to attack him and he fell back before he was able to do anything. Uh, it's not a point that we're looking to attack unless you kick somebody right in the center. If somebody's running at you and you want to kick high, we're normally going to kick slow, uh, low. Uh, but just remember, if somebody is uh, wearing a shirt, it's hard to aim. If somebody is holding tightening their muscles, uh, or a big person, it's, it's hard to reach it. So it's not a favorable uh, pressure point in Krav Maga. Instead of that, we have the ribs on the side. Uh, whenever you breathe, you inhale, and the ribs expand. When you, ex when you exhale, uh, the, breath contract, uh, the ribs contract. And if 
the ribs uh, are smaller, so if you punch somebody in the rib, you can crack them, and the person's self, inner self-defense system will give them a sensation of, of fainting. It's like the body would realize something is not in the ordinary, and, uh, and the person is gonna be, he won't know where he is for a few seconds. It could be a black star, a lot of pain, and sometimes, sometimes somebody would faint if they break a finger. It's, it's for, for a few seconds, five seconds, six seconds, he's not gonna know where he is. Uh, how do we hit that? Oh, I'm sorry, that the, we have the upper jaw and, and, and the lower jaw. If we hit somebody in the jaw from the front, uh, you know, if, if the mouth is, is closed, then it's basically gonna, gonna shock the whole head. Either in the mouth or in the face area, we can create a knockout. If we hit him in a roundhouse, from this side, we might break their jaw and give them a knockout because the head is going to fall. We might break the jaw, but it's also going to fall if it's uh, strong enough. Uh, so, and then we have the groin. The groin, right between the legs, and uh, underneath. It's not in the front. If you kick somebody straight forward in the belt, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be uncomfortable, but underneath, basically. Uh, to hit somebody in the face, you basically, you can do it with a hand from here. Uh, hit somebody over there, I'm not gonna bend, basically you can do it with your leg, with your kick. Or, or with the knee from here. And we're gonna talk about it later. <clears throat> and then another big muscle, the thigh, if you kick somebody here, you're gonna create a lot of lactic acid to be, to be there. And then we have the knee joint. The knee joint, we have the kneecap. And then we have crucial ligaments that hold the upper bones. We have two bones on the top, two bones on the bottom. They hold them together. Uh, soccer player and football players always get their foot caught in the lawn. And then they need a, a knee operation uh, for, for the ligament. If somebody got a good kick, kick in the leg, mostly from the side, to the other side, a good kick in here, and overextend the crucial ligaments and the person in a self-defense system will give them a command. He's gonna be in a lot of pain, probably sitting on the floor crying, and he would be afraid to move. The, the whole article of the, of the knee is gonna fill up with fluid to protect it from further damage, and the person won't be able to move. He's gonna be limping. Uh, and then we have the shin bone. That is very close to the surface, to, to the skin. And if you scrape it or kick it, the person's gonna be in pain. If somebody grabs you from the back, grab me from the back, from here, you can just kick it with your heel. You can also step and stomp on all his toes and, uh, and crush him, basically. Uh, so from the front area, we're gonna attack somebody to the facial area, throat. You can actually stop somebody by putting one finger in here and pushing it down, right? Um, you can also try to grab somebody's rib and inflict pain. You just put your finger between that. Um, so we have the face area, the neck, sides. On the left hand side we have the stomach, on the right hand side uh, we have the liver. And uh, if you hit somebody in the stomach, the, he would feel like he wants to puke on the liver. Uh, you get a shaking sensation, but again, it's, it's, you hit the rib, and if you crack the rib, it's, it's a fainting, fainting sensation. You're, for self-defense purposes, you're not gonna hit and hear somebody. You might, if you're close, from here, you might knee him over here. But this is all secondary. You're not gonna walk with somebody and knee him because I don't know if, why would anybody that wants to attack you would let you grab him and let you knee him. But if you hit him and he doesn't know where he is, then you can continue from here to knee him. When you knee him, you're using uh, gravity basically, you're leading backwards. So the knee will come up and knee him hard. So I'm leaning all my weight going backwards, lifting the knee up in, in, with speed and pulling him down on my knee. And there's no reason to bring his face down. I can, him anywhere else and then if you know I want I'm gonna move back basically. Um, from the side again we have the temple we have uh, the artery that brings supply oxygen to the brain
from both sides. Actually, if, if you drive with your car on a, on a garden hose, the water is going to stop. So there's going to be no blood and oxygen to the brain. Uh, some uh, artery is more flexible, some is not, and it's going to stay stuck together for too long. The person is going to faint or die. How are we going to hurt that? Uh, you can choke somebody with a rope, with their clothes, applying pressure on the artery, or you can just hit him. You hear? You hit him. It's like slapping somebody back, but with a narrow part of your hand. You're just going to shift all your weight and hit him here, and you want to pass the target. And then we have uh, all the articles, the shoulder, elbow, wrist, and fingers. You can use the large article to manipulate somebody to hold him in one place, uh, whether if you want to just put him on the ground here, or, or grab him, or take some, something out of their arms, or put them on the ground, or the easiest thing is to break a finger. You grab the wrist, you take the finger, and you put both parts, one towards each other, and in front of your body, so you know you have all the body over there. If somebody is heavier than you, you know, if they can lift you like that, that's fine, you know, but you can still have enough force to break their finger. So you don't want it to be away from you, you want to have control right in front of your belt and pull both of these parts together. Where are we going to use that? Grab me from, from the back. If my hands happen to be here, somebody grab me, I can just do this and do that. From here, I can turn and pick it up. So from the side, we have temple articles, uh, the knee joint. And we have the kidney about here, uh, right underneath the last rib, the kidneys. Uh, years ago, a, a 14 years old girl got kicked in the kidney from the kids' school. She was in pain for a week or two. She didn't tell her parents she died from a kidney infection. Uh, at, when you get kicked on a, in a kidney on a spot, it's like, you, it's not really choking, but you're not gonna be able to, to move. Uh, when are we going to use that? If somebody chokes you from the back, okay, and then if, if he's pushing, I will do this, and now I'll come to the hip here. So I want to, I'm going to take an opportunity of, of the angle of the situation. And from the back, uh, most of the spine, we have the top of the head here, most of, uh, and then the, the last, uh, about uh, article number uh, number six of, of the spine. It's um, if you want to break somebody's neck, this is the, the area going to get hurt. Uh, most of the spine is strong; it's meant to carry the body weight, but about here it's weak. And if you break somebody's neck, you're cutting the power supply for everything in the body, and the person is dead. Uh, the spine has two. It's like two pipes, in one of them there's a spinal cord, the other one is a construction of bones that are flexible, sitting one on top of the other. If, if one of them will get close to the spinal cord, which has all the electricity to your body, then your body self-defense system will bring more lactic acid, it will tighten up that area to protect it from further damage, the person will better be, um, be able to move. But if you break it, then the person will be paralyzed from that point down. If it's in here, then also up. Uh, how do you, what do you do here? If you kick somebody in the groin, if let, let's see, you kick somebody in the groin, you bend, bend forward. Over here you come over here, you hit him right here with the elbow, or that. You're not going to break his neck, but he's not going to get up. You're going to make him faint. Uh, and again, we're not going to hit anywhere around here. The last bone, called the coxide bone, is, the, is right between the, the rear end cheeks. If somebody is standing to turn your back to you, whether it's a friend that is going to, or somebody is attacking you, or let's say somebody wants to do a roundhouse kick. Turn around. A roundhouse, no, no, face me. Okay. A roundhouse kick, some, some people like to do this. They'll come over here and turn to kick you. So the, the, the second this person turns, turn. Go ahead. Yes. Turn, turn. You just kick him right here. And they're going to fall flat on, on their face if you do it quickly. Either that, do it again. Or you move in, you need him over here. Uh, most people will not be able to uh, to sit for a couple of weeks, uh, and you know some people would ha would have to get a job standing if you do it right. But immediately, what happened? A person got to you know lunch forward, lie on the floor for a little bit. So, any questions? So
so far? About a pressure point? Okay. Uh, if you're close to somebody, uh, you gotta, if somebody's close to you, you can actually break their neck uh, by doing this. From here, you, you, uh, you're turning their head in a position that they have no control. If you're going to turn it horizontally, they're going to turn around. If you're going to turn like that, they can get a job at people's back or walk back. But if you do it at 45 degrees, like the globe, they would have no control of it. As long as you keep yourself, you, you keep a position that you can be in control. So from here, you turn it like the globe, they have no control. You can put it on the ground, but you don't need to. If you do it fast enough, you're just going to give it a quick turn here, and the person is going to continue everything by himself, and he's not going to never get up. Uh, but, but again, who's going to let you grab it? If somebody comes close to attack you with a punch or a kick, and, and you move to the side while they're still doing it, then you can do that. We, we're going to learn how to hit somebody, uh, and, and then we're going to learn reaction time. Let, let's go over reaction time first. Uh, I'm going to, I, I need another volunteer actually, anybody, what's your name? Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm going to try to uh, touch your hair right here, and I want you to block my hand before I do that. Yeah, I'm going to slow. Okay. He can defend Try anything else, just that. Okay. Now, you want to do it a, a little bit close to here so you come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay. You did a great defense. I, I, I couldn't do that. Now, that's your reaction time. I, I stepped from here, you saw it coming. And this is an instinctive natural defense that everybody has. Uh, reaction time, if I'm standing here, I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> and did I touch it? Twice. Okay. Now, I'm doing it from here again. Anybody can tell me why if I'm here? <laughs> well, why if I'm here I can touch him and if, I, if I'm here I cannot? Anybody have an idea? Simple math. You only, if, if you know how to do the kind of add one and add one together after you three, then you can find the answer. Uh, a long attack. Which means it's a long motion. 